Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Abhinaya. I am a consultant pediatrician. So, in Nelson based pediatric teaching in the chapter of neurology, the topic of discussion now is on congenital CNS anomalies. So, we will discuss not all the anomalies but the most common ones like the neural tube defects, the migration disorders, etc. So, these, uh, these uh, are important when you find uh, in clinically also for counseling purposes and you find these children as one among those intractable epilepsy groups. Okay. So, this is uh, a very interesting discussion. It is going to be very interesting uh, discussion. So, let us get started. So, first I will start with the most common CNS anomaly, congenital anomaly of the CNS which is the neural tube defect. So, what happens in a neural tube defect? So, the neural tube antenatally it fails to close. This closure which occurs spontaneously between the third to fourth week of gestation, if it does not happen, it can cause neural tube defects. So, it should close rostrally, it should close caudally, right. So, this can cause a variety of neural tube defects like anencephaly if it is open rostrally or if it is open caudally, then it results in open spina bifida. So, the precise cause is unknown. We have certain risk factors which we attribute to neural tube defects. So, any maternal hyperthermia or infections, maternal intake of some drugs like valparin, maternal malnourishment, especially when there is folate deficiency. So, the low RBC folate levels, that is a strong risk factor for neural tube defects. Apart from that, maternal GDM, any radiation exposure during pregnancy and maternal obesity, right? All these are going to be the risk factors for neural tube defects. So, these are all some of the neural tube defects that we are going to discuss. So, I just want to make clear that these three are the most common ones, okay? I have left the anen carefully, all those things here. So, first picture, you can see this is a spina bifida occulta, okay? So, spina bifida occulta, here the spinal cord is intact, there is no protrusion of the meninges. What you can see here is the vertebral body, there is some defect, isn't it? So, the posterior vertebral body is defective. Most of the spina bifida occultas will be accompanied by some cutaneous manifestations. Here you can see a hairy patch. So, there can be a dermal sinus, there can be a lipoma, there can be some capillary malformations. So, most of these spina bifida occulta will have some cutaneous malformations. Next, meningocele. What happens in meningocele is there is a defect which is communicating to externally. The, through the defect, the meninges are protruding out, right? In myelomeningocele, what happens? Meninges are protruding. Myelo means spinal cord. The spinal cord is also protruding. Okay. So, these are the three most common defects of neural tube. So, first we will start with the spina bifida occulta. Here spina bifida occulta I told only the vertebral, vertebral defects are present. There is no communication with the outside world. So, sometimes it is totally asymptomatic randomly when we do an x-ray or when we do a neuroimaging we will be able to find this. So, most patients are asymptomatic and they lack any neurological signs. And uh, sometimes when we have this cutaneous manifestations, we can go and do the neuroimaging. As I just told you, there can be a hemangioma in the lumbosacral area, there can be some disc skin discoloration, there can be a lump, hairy patch, etc. So, these are some cutaneous manifestations of spina bifida occulta. So, in the first slide, you can see that here, you can find that there is a lumbosacral lipoma. Here, there is a lipoma. There is a hemangioma, there is a capillary malformation here. Also in the center, you can see that there is a dermal pit. It can be a pit or a sinus. And uh, you can see that the gluteal folds are irregular. Okay, they are shifted to one side. So, this is a hematoma again in the lumbosacral region. So, any cutaneous manifestations that you find in the lumbosacral region, please do not ignore. We definitely have to do the neuroimaging. I will tell you when to do the neuro neuroimaging for these uh, situations. Okay. 